This video is going to be a fairly in-depth comparison between 29ers and 27.5s. And let me give you some background on this before I get going. Several years ago, I did a comparison with 29 versus 26, and that was before 27.5s were mainstream. Um, and I concluded that for cross-country uses, that 29ers were, uh, they were faster for me and probably a better ride for most people. Now since then, 27.5s have really come on the scene. And for cross country, I was all 29 for several years. Uh, I had an Epic 29er, uh, I had a Giant Anthem X 29er, I had a, an Orbea Occam 29er, and a Niner Jet 9 RDO. Um, I did some comparisons about a year ago when 27.5s really uh, came on the scene and um, I loved 27.5s the way they ride for cross country and most of my riding is cross country not really by choice but just because of where I live um, there's not much all mountain riding I have to drive about six hours to get some good all mountain riding um, so most of my riding is cross country and it's obviously the mountain bike that I spend the most time on so <clears throat> I've been on 27.5s strictly for about nine months now. I've done a lot of uh, races on them, a lot of riding. Like yesterday, I did a 50 mile um, event on my 27.5. So I've really gotten accustomed to, to the 27.5, really like the way they handle. The thing that I like most about 27.5 is the short chain stage and short wheelbase um, because it makes for a really, really sharp handling bike. Um, but what I want to do now is get back on some 29ers that I'm going to borrow and give a comparison. Uh, I'll give a ride comparison uh, and I'll do some lap times. Even though a lot of y'all out there don't race and don't really care about lap times, the reason I like doing that, number one for me, I just like to be on the fastest bike I can. Uh, but also when you're doing a time lap, it makes you push really hard and you're pushing the bike to more of the limits and you can get a better idea of what the bike is gonna um, ride like. Um, so I'll, um, I'm gonna start off um, comparing two giant anthems, my Anthem 27.5 and a, a 29er. I'm gonna show these here in a second. Um, I'm also gonna try to get my hands on at least one or two other 29ers, um, which I'll show when I get my hands on them. And uh, I'm gonna do some back-to-back -back tests, uh, which I'll start today, and I'll do some time stuff, probably some shorter time loops so I can repeat that and then uh, I'm going to do some, I have a, a, a time trial course that I use that's about 14 minutes long and I'm going to do that over consecutive days so I can be fresh when I do them and I'll uh, give you guys the lap times on those. I'm going to record my average heart rate and all that. So um, let me show you the, the bikes that I'm going to start off comparing. So here's my Giant Anthem 27.5 and I am not going to go into much detail at all on this since I did a pretty in-depth review on this. Um, but just real quick, it is set up as a 1x10 drivetrain. 17 inch chain stays and this bike weighs just a hair over 24 pounds and a lot of that weight savings comes with the podium wheels um, these are my everyday wheel set um, uh, this is a very light wheel set because i'm fairly light uh, i can get away with riding these uh, day in and day out uh, but they really lighten up the ride and, and make it a uh, a really fast accelerating bike and it's got the schwab rocket run tires on it and this is the 29er that i'll start off comparing and this is a giant anthem x 29er and like i said in the beginning i did own one of these and i i, I liked the bike i had it set up as a 1x10 like this I, I had a set of stands crest 29er uh, wheels on that bike and it was aluminum and um, like i said i like the bike but it was not my favorite ride because of the length of the chain stays. This one has 18.2 inch chain stays. I like the way the front end handled, but the back end was a little hard to control. Um, if you got into a, a situation where you're drifting the tires, it was just hard to, to keep the bike in control. I found with the shorter chain stays that I'm able to, uh, like I said, control the back end better and I'm able to drift the tires in a way uh, where I, I feel like I'm steering not only the front end but the back end. Uh, once you start to get into a longer wheelbase and long chain stays, the back end kind of does its own thing. It's, it's hard to steer the back end. You feel like you're, you're steering the front and um, 
just hoping for the best with the rear of the bike. So it's been nine months since I've ridden one of uh, these uh, full suspension 29ers. And so I'm going to uh, give you guys some feedback on what I feel getting back on one. Now this is a pretty good bike to compare to my Anthem X because they're both aluminum frames. Um, they both have the same tires. They both have the Rocket Run tires. Uh, they're both set up as a 1x10. Both have Shimano brakes. Um, these are SLX brakes, whereas my Anthem X 27.5 uh, or Anthem 27.5 has um, just regular um, XT brakes. Uh, the, the big difference in this is going to be the wheel set. Uh, this bike comes in almost 27 and a half pounds, so uh, almost three and a half pounds heavier than my Anthem X. And really most of that has got to come in through the wheel set because a lot of these components are the same. Now the, the seat post and the bar and the stem are probably, probably a little bit heavier. That may account for a quarter of a pound. Uh, but most of the weight is going to be in the wheels because those podium wheels are very light. Uh, and um, we'll see how that kind of translates into a ride characteristic. All right, I just got done with my first tests with the uh, two bikes, the Anthem 29er and the Anthem 27.5. And uh, let me just give you kind of my feedback so far. First of all, switching back and forth between the bikes, what I did was I did um, a warm-up lap on the 29er and then I did a timed section on the 29er. And the, the, the difference in the way the rear end feels isn't quite as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, the, the Anthem 27.5 definitely has a little bit more control in the rear end, um, but uh, again, I didn't feel it was as dramatic as I remember um, when I came off the uh, Anthem X29 a couple years ago. Um, so I was pleased with that. The, the Anthem 29 is a sweet bike. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, the 29er uh, felt smoother, um, and that's you know that's not really a surprise to most of us who have read a lot about 29ers. Um, just the way that it it went over root gardens and just choppy stuff on the trail, rocks and things like that. It's definitely a smoother ride. Um, once you're on a straightaway or just cruising, uh, the 29ers, they just cruise really well. Um, it does take a little bit more effort to get the, the front end to go into a corner. Um, it's Again, it's not as dramatic as I thought it would be. Um, but, you know, again, this isn't rocket science, but the difference between 29 and 26 is a lot more dramatic. Uh, 27, 5, and 29 uh, cornering, I didn't feel um, that there was a huge difference. Uh, the front end of the 27.5 just feels so flickable. Um, the the 27.5 feels like half the bike underneath you than the 29. Um, the 29, just it just feels big. And the biggest difference I noticed is feeling like you're just higher off the ground on the 29, which, you know, raises your center of gravity. So you, um, you actually don't lean the bike quite as much on the 29 as you do the 27.5. Now, the one complaint that I have about my Anthem 27.5, it's probably the only complaint, is it's a little bit more prone to pedal strikes. The bottom bracket's pretty low. So having a low bottom bracket, you know, it's a trade-off. Um, it's going to corner better. Uh, it's going to be more flickable uh, and, and go from corner to corner easier. Um, but you are more susceptible to pedal strikes. So uh, the 29, uh, I think, has an advantage there. Um, as far as traction, um, we have a lot of leaves on the trail right now. And uh, the 29er had better traction up steep climbs. Uh, I don't know if I even slipped the rear tire once on the 29 on um, the Anthem. Just a couple times on some roots um, that had some leaves on it. Um, the, the, the rear tire just a little bit of a, a slip, um, but not too bad. Um, so, you know, let me kind of break down the ride and, and, and um, say which one I think is better. Cornering, um, you know, surprisingly, this I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think it's about a tie. I would have thought the 27.5 um, would have really uh, just killed the 29 in the corners. Um, the 27.5 goes into the corners better. There's no doubt about that. If you're flicking the bike from side to side, the 27.5 wins. Um, but if you're just coming into a, a nice, steady, hard corner, 
Um, I think it's a tie because even though the 29er um, needs a tiny bit more real estate on the corners and um, is a little bit harder to initiate that turn, uh, it holds the line really well. Uh, and so it really it's going to depend on the corner. I think overall, I think they're going to be uh, about a tie again. Um, you know, there's 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 different characteristics characteristics of both. Now, as far as a fun factor, um, this is going to depend on what you call fun. I think most mountain bikers who ride pretty aggressively are going to feel a 27.5 is more fun. Um, like I said, it just feels like less bike. Both of these are mediums. Both have about the same amount of top tube, but the 27.5 just felt I mean, it felt like a BMX bike almost. Um, it's a little dramatic, but. Um, it just feels like less of a bike and you can just flick the thing around you can skid the rear end um, In the corners if you like doing you know that counter steering where you kind of slide the rear end one way and corner the other um, 27.5 is going to be um, a funner bike um, The 29er feels just more planted on the trail um, You know the traction's awesome um, planted in the corners uh, It doesn't feel like you're going to break break free in the corners um, the 29er needs more traction in the corners, but it also gets more traction. So if that makes sense to you, um, that's why, again, I think it's a kind of a tie in the corners. As far as just overall ride comfort, um, I'm going to give that to the 29er. So if you're doing just long, steady rides, endurance races, things like that, um, 29er is, is, is probably going to be your bike. Um, for cross-country racing, um, you know, let me tell you my lap times because I was actually really surprised. Now, like I said, I did a 50 mile event yesterday and uh, my legs were not sprightly by any means and I'm a little fatigued. But on my first lap on the 29er, this is kind of a short section, but seven minutes and 36 seconds. I jumped on the 27.5, did about a 10, 15 minute warm up just to get used to the bike again and did a 746 so i was actually 10 seconds slower on the 27.5 now this particular section of trail had more straightaways than we normally have so i'm going to repeat this test in a couple days from now and um, you know do a section of trail that's more twisty more um, common to what we typically ride here so the the section of trail that i did felt better on the 29er just because it had more straightaways so um, 736 on the 29, 746 on the 27.5. I jumped back on the 29 and did another lap and was 744. Um, so I was slowing down a little bit again, probably more so than normal just because I'm a little fatigued. Um, so if you averaged the two 29er laps, which I think is going to be the, the best way to do it, um, it's going to be about six seconds faster on this section of trail than the 27.5. And again, that's with a wheel set that's not really considered a race wheel set, although that both tires are tubeless and they're the exact same tire, um, the Schwab uh, Rocket Rons. Uh, so, um, I, you know, a little surprised on the 29er lap time because um, a lot of my other tests that I did about 10, 11 months ago, I was faster on the 27.5. But again, I'm going to repeat this in a couple days, um, give myself some time to recover and do some more back-to-back -back tests and um, we'll see how it goes. And then the other bike that I'm going to try to get my hands on is going to be a Niner Jet 9 RDO. Um, I think it's a carbon and that bike has a little bit shorter chain stays than the Anthem. Um, so, you know, that one handles uh, really well, but, um, you know, good test today. So I'm going to recover for a little bit and uh, try this again. And let me add one more note that I forgot to mention. And that is that I kept a full water bottle on the 27.5 and I had no water bottle on the 29er. Uh, just to kind of even out the weights a little bit. Um, I know that that lowers the difference, the, the, the difference between the bikes on the overall weight. Um, but rotational weight um, has a big part in this. And... Um, you know, there's really no way to, to, to bring that weight closer. Um, so I just wanted to throw that in there, that that's what I did to uh, narrow the gap a little bit in the weights. All right, I am out for my second day of testing. What I'm gonna do today is, I'm still gonna test the 27.5 Anthem and the 29er Anthem. Um, I'm going to do a hill climb that's pretty straight. It should only be like a minute and a half. 
I'm going to time that and then I'm going to come back down the hill and I'm going to time that without pedaling. So I'm just going to let the bike coast and I'm going to see which one gets to the bottom faster. I mean, I think the 29ers are going to be the winner there, but let's just give it a shot. Then I'm going to do a um, twisty section. This is a different trail system than I was at the other day. So this one's, uh, the trail is going to be a little bit smoother, uh, but more twisty. Uh, and so, uh, you know, my hypothesis is that the 27.5 is going to be at least as fast or faster than the 29er, but we'll see. So I'm going to do the, the 27.5 first this time. Uh, last time I did the 29er first, and I'm going to use the full water bottle on the 27.5 and no water bottle on the, on the Anthem 29er since the Anthem 29er is a, a, a lower build quality than I would probably build if I were going to build up a 29er. Uh, so. It's a nice day out. It's a uh, mid 50s, a little overcast, uh, slight breeze. The trails are in great shape. Um, we had an event out here which really buffed in the trails, and also we've had a little bit of rain lately. The trails are just a little bit moist but not wet, which gives you great traction. So I should be able to rail this test lap. So time to get it going and uh, see what these bikes can do. Here we go. Okay, uh, let me wrap up what the times were today and kind of my feel of the bikes. The, uh, the hill climb on the uh, 27.5 was 1 minute and 32 seconds. On the 29er Anthem, it was 1 minute and 36 seconds. So about 4 seconds faster on the 650B. Um, on the descent, where I just let the bike coast and didn't really pedal at all, um, the Anthem 27.5 was 1 minute and 14 seconds, and the 29er was 1 minute and 11 seconds, so 3 seconds faster, which you know, I kind of anticipated that. So what that tells me is that 27.5 bikes are probably going to be faster on climbs unless those climbs are very technical. Um, and on the descents that are more wide open where you're not braking and accelerating um, on a descent, uh, the 29 is probably going to be faster. On my cross country lap, which was pretty flat, not many hills at all, and um, uh, but but more twisty on this lap I was braking and accelerating a lot more than I did three days ago when I did this and the 27.5 was 8 minutes and 38 seconds and the 29er was 8 minutes and 42 seconds so the, a little bit faster on the 27.5 where you're having to brake and accelerate a lot um, so again that kind of goes back to what I said uh, I think earlier is that on trails that are more twisty, a 27.5 is probably going to be faster because of that constant braking and accelerating. Um, now, you know, the big as asterisk here is the uh, the wheel set. The 29er wheel set's heavier. What I'm going to do, I'm going to repeat the same test on Friday, two days from now, um, but I'm going to use a very high-end build Jet 9 RDO. Um, in fact, it's probably a little bit higher of a build than I would typically build. Um, so I'm going to do this exact same thing, and uh, we'll see. I, I'm not really going to compare the times to today. I'm going to compare the times between the two bikes because it's a little breezy out today, and I had a tailwind going up the hill and a headwind coming down, and I could feel a little bit of a headwind in the woods when I was doing the, uh, the cross-country lap. Uh, so... Again, lap times aren't necessarily important to everybody. Let me talk about how the bikes felt today. Pretty similar to, to the other day. The, the 29er just feels really smooth. Feels like when you stop pedaling, the bike um, goes a little bit easier uh, than the 27.5. Um, they both corner very well. Your, your overall center of gravity is lower on the 27.5 but your center of gravity in relation to the, the axles of the front and rear wheel uh, is lower on the 29 so they both have a really good feel now I will say I had traction was awesome today I mean I was railing the corners and I had a couple pedal strikes on the 27.5 and none on the 29er um, so like I said um, last time that that's probably my only complaint with the 27.5 the trade-off is you're low to the ground and can just rail the corners on that bike. Um, but the the Anthem 29, you know, I don't know if they've tweaked the geometry uh, from the one that I had a few years ago, but this bike doesn't have that rear end lag that I remember having on my Anthem 29er. Um, so, you know, maybe I just 
I've been coming off 27.5 so long and not 26 that I'm more used to a little bit longer change. I don't know. It's just it's weird. But this Anthem 29 is feeling really good. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to uh, do this again and a couple days from now on a higher end Bill 29er and kind of give you my feedback from there. So it's uh, working out pretty good uh, as far as my data. It's pretty interesting. So um, stay tuned. Okay, I'm out on what's probably going to be my last day of back-to-back -back testing. And I'm actually out the next day. I said I was going to wait two days, but we're supposed to get some rain tonight, and I didn't want the trail conditions to deteriorate. So I'm going to do this again. And I got my hands on probably one of the sweetest mountain bikes I've ever ridden, and I'm going to show you the bike. So I'm going to do the same thing, uh, hill climb, descent, cross-country lap. Today I'm going to do the 29er first. And then I'm going to go grab my Anthem 27.5 and compare it. So let me show you this uh, Jet 9 RDO. So here's the bike. And you probably want to grab a napkin so you don't get drool on your phone or computer. Now this is a medium-sized carbon Jet 9 RDO. And it's got the RockShox RS1 fork. First time I've ridden this fork. The Fox Shock in the rear. SRAM XX1 uh, shifting. So it's 1x11. It's got a carbon flat bar from Niner, uh, Niner's stem and carbon seat post. And something that I'm just loving, the first time I've ever ridden a set of carbon wheels, these Stans No Tubes Valor 29ers, uh, super stiff, super quick in the corners. Um, I'll give a little bit more feedback after I do my cross country lap. And it's got uh, Shimano XTR brakes. So time to do the cross country lap. Go grab the 27.5 and repeat, and I'll report back on what I find. Here are my results from today. On the Jet 9 RDO hill climb, I had a 1 minute and 33 second hill climb. On the Anthem 27.5, I had a 1 minute and 35 second hill climb, so 2 seconds faster. On the Jet 9, again, this is a wide open hill, no real turns on it at all. Interestingly, on the downhill, I'm where, again, I just let the bike coast, just took two pedal strokes and Got the bike going and coasted downhill. I was a 1 minute and 11 second on the Jet 9 and a 109 on the Anthem. So I don't know if maybe the wind had a little bit to do with that, but uh, that kind of surprised me. On the cross country lap, I did an 840, 8 minutes, 40 seconds on the Jet 9, and I did an 836 on the Anthem 27.5. So very interesting results. You know, these lap times, <laughs> they're not. They're not worlds apart, uh, and it, and what's amazing to me is actually how fast the uh, the aluminum Anthem 29er was. Um, that was a you know that bike is about a fifth or maybe a quarter of the price of the Jet 9 RDO, and the times weren't that far off. Uh, so I really love the, those carbon wheels. It's the, that's probably the liveliest wheel set I have ever ridden on a mountain bike, and uh, I could see myself trying to get some of those in the budget one day so those are really sweet um, so you know I'm gonna kind of think about this and give you guys my summary of 27.5 and 29 and you know which one I think would be best for uh, different types of riders and riding style so uh, I'll do that uh, tonight after I get home and get showered and everything uh, so um, I'll be right back Well, before I went back home and, and gave you guys my final thoughts on all this, I felt like I wanted to do two more rides. So what I did was I went back out the next day on the Jet 9 RDO on my lunch break, and I did what has been my traditional time trial course for many years, and uh, it has more hills. It's not near as flat as the other one that I did. Uh, and on that bike, on the Jet 9 RDO, I did a 14 minute time trial. Um, that's a pretty good time. Uh, my all time record was a 1325 set on my um, 27.5 last year. But the soil was a little heavy, it was a little wet, um, so that kind of plays into it. Plus, I think I was getting um, a little bit fatigued. You know, I've been riding hard three or four days in a row. 
Uh, and then I did the downhill thing again, and I was a 111, and I, I did that cross-country loop that I've been comparing the bikes on on the Jet 9, and I had an 857, so it was like 20 seconds slower uh, than some of my other times. So I don't know what happened, if I, maybe I was just starting to get tired, but I came back out today, which is a Saturday morning, and I, I did this on the 27.5, and I did that time trial course and I had 1403 so I was about three seconds slower on the 27.5 on that course but it was early it was about 8:30 in the morning uh, and I just didn't feel warmed up and it was cold it was about 36 degrees Fahrenheit when I started the rise probably about 40 and um, you know it's just kind of hard to get going when it's cold and if you want to get real scientific the air is a little denser uh, when it's colder out so um, you know I I just I feel like the time probably would have been about 10 or 15 seconds faster had I been warmed up because at the end of the ride I went out and I rode two hours after that and then I did the downhill and I did a 105 just letting the bike coast so about six seconds faster than the Jet 9 but I didn't have very much of a headwind today and I did have one yesterday so that really played into it but I finished the ride with that that um, cross country loop and I had an 837 837 so it was 20 seconds faster than yesterday's time on the jet 9 uh, so you know I'm definitely starting to get fatigued and it's probably time to really rest and uh, chill out and uh, sit back and give you guys my thoughts on this and, and kind of wrap up you know my summary on wheel size so I'm gonna do that and uh, report back to you and let me add one more comment um, while it's fresh on my mind. The more I jump back and forth between a 29 and a 27.5, the more I start to appreciate the differences. And I'm going to really go into the differences uh, in a little bit. But the agility of the 27.5 is addictive. Um, <laughs> I, I do this thing where I kind of really lower my head into a corner. Uh, and I, I got that from when I used to ride sport bikes. I'm kind of starting the, the corner with your head and then letting the bike follow and you can really just get your center of gravity low on the 27.5 and it's a blast now the 29 is fun too because you, you know your your center of gravity in relation to the wheel axles uh, is is low too um, but the 27.5 um, you can just dive into a corner quicker and sprint out of it quicker So, you know, that's, that's one thing I wanted to say that I really notice. Uh, on the 29, I, I, you know, I do notice that it doesn't accelerate as fast as the 27.5. And again, the more I go back and forth between the bikes, the more I notice that. Um, you know, even that's a, though that's a really light 29er with carbon wheels, um, it still takes a little bit more effort to get it up to speed, a few more pedal strokes than the 27.5. So, uh, again, I'll give you guys a, a full rundown here in a minute. Since this video was getting pretty long at almost half an hour, I'm going to do my final conclusion between wheel sizes in a separate video. Uh, that way anyone who doesn't want to watch this whole in-depth analysis can get my summary um, by just watching that video. So check out my channel uh, for the conclusion to this video.